can see your screen, yes. Excellent. So hello and, and welcome. And um, thank you for spending your Saturday, part of your Saturday with me. So I'm going to talk about creating Azure SQL database users programmatically with a service principle using Azure DevOps. Uh, but first, I've forgotten something. Let me let me find the right thing. Oh, if I check my resource groups, oh, I don't have my Azure SQL databases to show you. So let's start those going. So we're going to run some Terraform. Click go on that. And it's going to queue. And it's going to say, oh, an approval. You need an approval. Right, OK. So I better approve that. So yeah, so power off the day. Uh, let's make it look right, and we'll click approve. And what we do is just watch what this does. And it's going to build out our Azure SQL database using some, oh, we're in the right place, using some Terraform. So we've got some Terraform, set some local variables, and we're going to create a SQL server, and we're going to create a firewall rule, an elastic pool, some databases, um, or add our auditing policies in uh, virtual network, all the good things that you would need to have. And we'll just check and make sure that it's actually running. <laughs> Yay for Asha. So whilst that is just sitting, waiting to go, perhaps the other thing we'll do is we'll do this. And what this code is going to do is it's going to fail because I've picked the wrong one. So let's use the one that's going to work. Go away. Start that again, and we will just run that. And that's just going to go back and check the SQL instance and make sure that it's ready when we need it. So there we go. Our um, deployment is starting. So whilst that is running, let's go back to some slides. So who am I? My name is Rob Saul. Uh, your best way of finding me is to use Twitter and SQL DBA with Beard. Um, I am a dual MVP. Oops, let's go back to that one. I'm a dual MVP, both data platform and cloud and center management. And I do a lot of work in both the PowerShell community and the data community, especially in and around DBA tools. So what is our problem here? I mean, 2020, obviously, that was a big problem. But the question I was asked was, could you please automate a solution to make it easy for the operational team to control permissions to Azure SQL Database and Azure SQL Managed Instance, please? We want to take away all of the um, process and manual work that is required for this. Can you automate it? Yes, absolutely. I love automating things. They had another request. Also, we'd really like to use Excel. Of course they would. Everybody loves Excel. Make sure I've got that. Uh, everybody loves Excel. OK, so let's talk about how can we create our Azure SQL database users. So you've got two options. You can use the 
a SQL Server Administrator, a SQL Authenticated User, maybe an SA account, or you can use the Azure Active Directory Admin for your Azure SQL Server that you set up when you created it or you added it later. Okay, so oops, let's go back one. So if we look at creating with a SQL Server Administrator, we can create users that are based on SQL Server authenticated logins or contained database users based on SQL Server authentication. So we either have a login or we can go have a contained database user. But the problem is for those, they're only SQL authentication and we want to use Azure Active Directory. So we're going to have to use an Azure Active Directory admin, and that enables us to create the same SQL authentication users, which is awesome, but also allows us to create contained database users based on AD users or groups. Excellent. This sounds like just the sort of thing that we want. In fact, it is in our only option. We don't have any other way of doing this programmatically. So we want an automated infrastructure as code deployment. We've already seen that that's started. And we want to have a permissions as code pipeline. We don't want any manual intervention at all. So how do we create an Active Directory contained database user? Just use a bit of T-SQL. Create user name from external provider. So that's the part that makes sure that we're in an Azure SQL database and it says, go and look up in Azure AD to make sure this name is correct. However, only connections that are established with Active Directory accounts can create other Active Directory users. Remember, we had two splits. We can only be with the Active Directory admin account. But if we wish to create Azure Active Directory accounts, we can only use uh, a session that's been created with Active Directory authentication. OK, so we've, we've got some requirements here. We need to apply some permissions. We need to set our Azure SQL Server identity. We need to set our Active Directory admin. We need a directory reader's role. This was the most troublesome thing to do in a corporate environment. We need an Azure DevOps pipeline, and we need our permissions in an Excel sheet because the client wants them in an Excel sheet. So we know that to, cre to create a user and to apply those permissions, we need to run some T-SQL. So what we need to do is we need to log in as the SPM to run the T-SQL. Now this morning when I was running my checks, I found that this isn't actually not true. I've changed my entire demo in the last hour and a half. Um, but we're going to use DBA Tools. DBA Tools is a PowerShell module designed for interacting with data platform, with SQL Server generally. It will work against Azure SQL databases and Azure managed instances. Not everything will work, but some things will work. Now, to be able to connect to Azure SQL Database, you have to set up your connection first with a Connect DBA instance. On-prem, you can do it a different way. But I always recommend whichever instance you're connected to, that this is how you do it. You create your Connect DBA instance object, and then you use that object to, if we look here, this, Azure SQL is actually the object from our Connect DBA instance. It is not a SQL instance name. And then we just pass in our queries and at the end we disconnect. So here is some T-SQL and some PowerShell. And this is how we make this connection work. Put in some good T-SQL with some validation and then use invoke DBA query to run it. Excellent. That's how we can pass 
our permission. So the next thing is to give the Azure SQL Server an identity. So if you create your Azure SQL Server with PowerShell using the new AZ SQL Server, then you will need to use the assign identity flag. If you use Terraform or Azure Bicep, then you need to have the identity and the type is system assigned. That's the only type that's available, but system assigned is what you need to put in. You can do that when you create it or you can change it later. Two things ticked off, excellent. So now we need an Active Directory admin. In the portal, you can see we've got Beard Elastic SQL, that's my SQL instance, and I've gone to the Active Directory admin and I've set it to be the SPN. Or I could set it to be an AD group that contains the SPN. If we're using PowerShell, then we need to use the set AZ SQL Server Active Directory Administrator command and pass in the object ID display name as well as the server name to be able to set that. In Terraform or Azure Bicep, in our SQL resource, we need to add in the Azure AD Administrator block and pass in a login username and the object ID. So that's our Active Directory admin. So the next step is really simple to do. However, in a corporate environment, adding a directory reader is more tricky. You add, a, you add your SPN to the directory readers role in Active Directory. So you just need to go to your Active Directory in Azure find the directory readers role, add assignments, and find your SPN then. So in the portal, it's really simple. However, this script must be executed by an Azure AD global administrator or a privileged role administrator. So as you can imagine, both of those are quite high permissions. And the problem with very high permissions in Azure AD is corporations don't like to give them to some bearded consultant who's in doing some work on a SQL Server. So what you can do is you can make use of the preview. It might even not be preview anymore. It might be uh, released process that allows you to add groups to that role. So then you can go to the corporation and say, hey, can you add an Azure SQL uh, group that I can put my identities in and apply that to the directory readers role? And then when I create a new Azure SQL, I can just push that identity into the group and it will have directory readers role. What I'm just going to do is just check and see how we're doing. So we can see that our Terraform is now about to apply. It's planned. It's going to create all of these things. The code's worked out. That's what I'm going to create. And shortly it's going to start doing its work. Excellent. So the directory reader's role is required because the Azure SQL instance needs to be able to go to Azure AD and say, is this user, is this group, does it exist? Can I now give it permissions? That is all that it, that it gives. It's the same permissions that we all have in on-prem Active Directory to be able to read the directory and uh, you know, identify other users or groups. OK, so we've got that bit sorted. Next. We need an Azure DevOps pipeline. We were using Azure DevOps, of course. Mainly I use PowerShell, so you could use this in any DevOps pipeline processing uh, technology that you choose to use. 
got a number of steps that we provide. Now, the first thing that I do is I set this to automatically run. So trigger branches include main. So we're only going to make use of a main branch. We don't need a complicated branching strategy here. Just when the main branch is updated, please do the thing. But only include the directory permissions. So I want you to run automatically, but only when the permissions directory has been changed. And then we add some variables. So now the variables for my key vault, for the resource group name and for the key vault name, and the same for the SQL Server uh, also. So those can just be passed in as variables. Now, the problem is here is I need to be able to go and get my um, secret for my SPN out of my key vault. But my DevOps pipeline is running in Azure in a Microsoft hosted agent. So connectivity between the two is not so easy. Of course, I could set up um, uh, oh, brain has fried. Um, I, I need to, I could set the, the firewall so that it allows all Azure services, but we, we don't want to do that. We want to keep everything as locked down as possible. Um, and I needed to have a very strong conversation with the security team. Because whilst we can add the Azure DevOps pipeline IPs, to the firewall, they change, they need to be updated. Even if you add them all in, sometimes it doesn't use ones that are from the IPs that they say, because Microsoft gives you an agent rather than waiting for an IP to be available and then give you an agent. So what I do is I run a task first that goes and grabs the IP address of the current um, agent and then uses AZ CLI to add it into the key vault firewall so that I can then the agent can go and grab my secret. I do the same then for the AZ SQL. And then I deploy the permissions from the Excel workbook just using a PowerShell script. However, what I also need to do is I need to make sure that no matter what happens, that is my condition always, whether the steps before pass, whether they fail, whether whatever happens, always run these two steps. And these steps just remove from the key vault and the SQL Server firewall, the IP address. Excellent. So that's good. Now, I was actually expecting that this would have completed by now, but no, we're still going. So you can see here that, uh, let's have a look there. There we are. So 50 seconds elapsed, still creating. The databases are still creating. Excellent. So we're not going to be very far away. This pleases me. Considering an hour and a half ago, it didn't work. So this is good. Uh, let's come back here. So ah, we interrupt this session to inform you that the SQL instance is ready. Excellent. The SQL instance is ready. So I can now add permissions with my SPN into my Azure SQL. So let me go to PowerShell. Where's my PowerShell? Okay, so you you completed excellent. So we'll we'll close you, and now we'll we'll add a user. So how do we add a user? Well, I showed you the code. We oh, look at that. Look at how Rob has not got the right script up. That's the wrong script. Where is the right script? In fact, let's just add it in here instead. Um. Yeah, let's add it in here instead. So we will grab this. We'll come to here. What have we got? There we go. 
So a key vault is called Sword Key Vault. You think I would remember that. And the username, let's do Rob at Swords. uk. I'll use the role login manager. This is our SQL instance, and we'll add it to the database beard audit. And the first thing we do is we go and we get our AZ key vault secret from our key vault, and it's a service principle GUID, and then the service principle secret. One we get as a plain text value for the username, one we get as a secret value for the credential. We create a credential, uh, a credential object, and then we grab our tenant ID. And then um, this is the thing that's changed. This not this morning, but I realised it this morning. Is that we used to be able to use that credential to connect. Now we have to do this. So we set our SQL connection experimental value to true for DBA tools. So set DBA tools config. And then we grab ourselves our token. So we connect to Azure, we connect AZ account. We pass in our credential, that's our SPN credential here. We need to say it's a service principle and we pass in our tenant ID. And then we get our access token using get AZ access token. Now for connect DBA instance to the SQL instance name, so dash elastic sequel dot database dot net we then pass in the access token come back to me thank you we then pass in the access token and then we run our tsql so we're just going to create our user from external provider and if we're not in the role db manager um, we add to the role DB Manager. Now you might be thinking, what's DB Manager? What's Login Manager? These are two roles within um, within Azure SQL that allow you to be able to manage databases or to manage logins. I'm just wondering whether that should be master. We'll find out in a sec. So once we've got that, we then invoke our query and run. So let's let's run that and see what happens. This over here, we're going to grab our secrets, set our token, run our query. Oh, hmm, login failed. Hmm, it's, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? Hmm, maybe, uh, maybe it's because Rob's used the wrong database name. Maybe we'll, we'll change that one to master because it's, you know, it should be the master database, I think. Change that one to master database. And actually, uh, invoke DB with query. Yeah, we're going to take that out of there. Try that again. See what we get. I notice. It appears like I'm making mistakes, but actually what I'm doing is showing you what happens when stuff goes wrong. So we'll try again, and this time we get this warning. Okay, so Beard Elastic SQL Database Windows. Failed during execution. The server identity does not have direct readers permission. Okay, and then you'll get this other error. So cannot add the principle because it does not have does not exist or you do not have permission. And again, and then I can't add the, the user to the role because the user doesn't exist. Okay. So those are the errors that you're going to get. So you've got to just look out for those, but it gives you the link. So here you go. You can go and find out how to do this. But we know how to do this. What we need to do is before we start is we will just and make sure it so some red go through there. Ah, the database is ready. Is it really? I'm waiting for the user. All oh, right, yeah, that's our login failed because we've added that. So we get this 
error because this was the old code with um, invoke DBA query and adding the database. And when we uh, use connect DBA instance with an access token, we don't need to have that invoke DBA query. So we'll run this. And again, it's going to tell me that the database is ready, which is a lie. A lie, oh, which might not be a lie. Okay. So I wonder if when I ran my code earlier, did I already have? Here's my Active Directory. That's all okay. So I think that what's happened is that my directory readers role, which is what I wanted to show you. So Active Directory, roles and administrators. Here is my directory readers, and well, we don't have an assignment. So we will add in beard dash elastic SQL. That's our SQL instance, and we'll go and add this into our directory reader. So that's done now. Let's have a look at our assignments. That's been assigned. Now, quite often, that doesn't work very quickly. But today, it is going to work instantly. Well, ah, prove it, Rob. Okay. Let's prove it. Let's find, find it this way because it'll be a bit quicker. Here's Azure Data Studio. So I'll look at Azure Data Studio and we'll get rid of PowerShell prompts and we'll go to Beard Elastic SQL. So I've got SQL Admin, a SQL Connection. There we go. No problem with that one. So I'm Beard Elastic SQL Master. I have my permissions added. Let's have a look. Security and logins. Nothing there. The databases, if we have a look, this, and we look at the system databases, master, security, users, and I have managed to add myself in using the SPM. Now, it's important to notice this because when I had a conversation with the team about, well, how does this work? And I said, all permissions are controlled by the Excel sheet and the pipeline. They said, but Rob, it's three o'clock in the morning and everything's broken and we need to sort of add some permissions to fix something. How do we do that? And I said, well, just change the Excel sheet in the pipeline because that's the right answer. But if you really, really can't for some reason, then here is some PowerShell that you can use that we can just change whichever username or group we need in here. We can run this script and it is going to go and add our users. But actually, we want to see the automation. So we've got an Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet, I've got a number of SQL instances in a table. I've got a number of databases in a table, and I've got a number of roles, and also the description of the roles. Because unlike my in example here, we had a whole number of custom roles that we created for various applications and users and, and whatever. So we added those in with a description so people knew. Because the people changing this Excel sheet weren't the technical team. They were the team that interfaced between the business and IT. So they're the ones who received the request, please can I have this permission? Please can this group have this permission to this database and what we did is we said to them great because they just created an excel sheet with the permissions required and then sent them to the dbas and the dbas had to sort it through and go and do the work so i said well we can automate that bit you create an excel sheet and you have to learn how to use git a little tiny bit and they're like, okay we can do this so it's on the front sheet, we need to make sure we've got the SQL instances because each one of these tables within the Excel sheet is then used to validate the data in the next sheet. 
the next sheet has got our principles. Do we want to have some users who are, have DB manager or login manager? We call those admins. So you can see up at the top here, we've got a set of admins and we've got people like Gianluca Sartori, Andre Kaman, Argenis Fernandez, William Durkin. Those people are allowed to be admin, everybody else is not. We add in our instance on the left and their username. Now, again, in this example, we are using individual users. Obviously, I recommend that you use groups. And a clicker that will. Once we've done that, we say, right, as long as you've added them into the second sheet, now you need to give them the permissions in the third sheet. And all of this then drops down. So the SQL instance would drop down, the database would drop down, the user would prop down, and then the role would drop down. And they just added these in. Done. They did a commit, so we had auditability within Azure DevOps. They pushed up the change. And then the permissions from Excel workbook pipeline just ran. So it starts running, but not just adding permissions, but also removing permissions. Warning, removing dazzling Monica Rathburn from the database Beard App 1 on instance list because She's not in the Excel sheet, but she was on the Azure SQL database. And the same with roles. So it's actually the same user, but it's okay. So we removed the user from the role, wherever the role is. Oh no, we just dropped the user there. No. That's because that one's the role. Removing the user from the DB owner role in the database, because they weren't in Excel sheet. So we've got everything that we need. We've got an Excel file with some permissions. We've got Azure SQL instance, which must have Azure Active Directory identity set as system managed, a managed system identity. You'll see it referenced as an MSI. We need to have an SPN, a service principal, with directory reader role assignment so that it is allowed to request information from Azure Active Directory and receive the user or groups. The Azure SQL instance needs to have directory reader permission role membership as well. We need DBA tools so that we can run our query. I highly recommend that you use Azure Key Vault to store the secrets for your SPN and Azure DevOps for running the code, but you can use other secret management or other DevOps pipeline code running technologies. So that's all of the slides. I think perhaps unless there are any questions, we should have a look at it. So did anybody have any questions? Are we all too quiet? Nope, I see no questions. So Let's come back to our instance. So we looked at the master database. Let's have a look at the other databases. Oh, oh. That's, that's interesting, isn't it? So this is my, my uh, Active Directory authenticated user. So I am in as master. You can see that I was in the master database. I have the DB manager and the login manager roles. So for the admin team, it was like, you're an admin. Great, now this is how we do it. But if I try and access another database, nope, bang, kicks me straight out. Because I haven't got any permissions in that database. If we look in our SQL authenticated user, we go and have a look at the users. You can see no users at all. So the SQL Server admin is allowed to go and have a look at the users. But Rob, as an admin, 
cannot access the database bid audit, for example, unless he's had roles specifically applied to that contained user, even though he can add roles himself. So there's a limit of permissions here. So we are locking it down for the admins and we're making sure that the roles are controlled. So let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look. We're in the presentations, so let's open the folder to our Terraform, oh, yeah, Terraform. Uh, no, because I would like you to add that folder, please. Add the folder. This is my Terraform repository that's held in Azure. No, go away, thank you very much. Uh, you could be saved. And in here, We've got our permissions uh, directory and it's got an Excel sheet. So let's reveal that. Right click, we'll reveal it in File Explorer. There we go. And now we're going to open this Excel sheet. So we open the Excel sheet and we say, right, those are all of our users. Uh, sorry, they're all of our users. Some of them are have got uh, admin permissions and some haven't. Here are our database users. And uh, maybe just to make the pipeline run, we're going to add in, pick an instance so in the drop down, pick a new database. Maybe we'll let Ben have access to the audit database. We'll find uh, Ben. <laughs> can't do like that, so we need to find, there he is, Berlin, Ben Kettner, and we'll give him the permissions data reader on the Beard Audit database. And then we'll save our Excel sheet and we must close it. We must close it because otherwise Git doesn't work. And as we've done that, we can then, if we just into here. We can see that, are we in the right place? No, we're not. So we'll CD for Git repos Terraform. We'll do a Git status and it'll tell me that I'm not in the right place. CD to oh, there we go. And Status, and we're going to do a git add and select this add to. We'll add in our Excel sheet, and now we need to do a commit message. Git commit. Audit. And th this is what our users. Uh, request 678. So this last bit is what we would ask our users to do. Make sure they were up to date, add in the permissions and message, and then do a git. So of course, there was an element of learning here. There was a new process that they needed to understand. But these people were used to new processes and we could make it very easy for them to do. We could explain that all they needed to do is follow these steps, three steps. Pull the latest main branch. They didn't need to understand what to do. They just needed to copy and paste some commands. CD to a directory, git pull. Open an Excel sheet, which is in this location. Make the changes, which were all dropped down and controlled. Save it. And then do a git add, a git commit with their message, which we insisted that they linked to a request number for score auditability and a git push. And said, as long as you see that, don't worry about it. Everything is fine. 
And I'll prove that everything is fine because we'll come back to our pipelines and we'll see that, hey, look, the deployed permissions pipeline is blue because it's running right now. Right at this moment in time, it's running. It's been running for a minute already. Let's have a look at the logs. We come in and have a look and you can see that we've had to get our client IP, add our firewall rule to our key vault and to our SQL server. And now we are deploying our permissions. So if we just quickly go and have a look at the resource groups, refresh, thank you. And we'll look at our SQL server. Uh, no, we'll look at our key vault actually, which is where we were just then. Look at our key vault. And we, if we look in networking, you can see that it has added in the IP address of our agent at this moment. If we go back and look at our IP address, did I write it out? No, I didn't write it out. And now it says deploy permissions. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. You can see that. Rob already existed. You remember that we did that manually with the PowerShell. So it knows that exists, that's, that's okay. But Jan Luca and Andre and Argenis and William, they didn't exist. So we're adding them into the master database and the DB manager and logging manager. And as well as that, in a minute and three quarters, we've added all of these. Oh, I've got some errors there, that's good. Let's go and have a look at our instance. We'll stay on the SQL Server one just because we can make life easy. We look at our security and our users and do a refresh. Bingo. There are all of our users. So we've successfully added our users into our database. This is Beard Audit, and we've got Ben already added. So that's how easy it is to do. Now, Ben's finished his work. So let's reveal in File Explorer, open the Excel sheet, and we'll delete Ben, save our Excel file, and we will then so she uh, will just say he's finished. So now we are removing Ben. Uh, request seven five six. Push and immediately, as soon as this goes up if we look at our pipeline you see that our pipeline is running you can see that we've got auditability we've got which request number we have we've got what's happening we know that if we come into here and we have a look at the change we can see that the user sql dba with the beard made this change now, because this is an Excel file, because it's a binary object, what we can't do is go into our commit history. Thank you. Go into our commit history and could do a compare. So we can see that we've got, uh, you know, if we did this with a, with a code file, we'd have our differences available to us. We don't have that, but we can at least have the original file and the modified file. So we can go and see what is happening. But we've got auditability available to us here. This pipeline took, uh, let's look at that again. This pipeline took two minutes and 43 seconds to run. So right now it's running its way through, just got to the permissions part, and it's gonna start adding uh, checking all of the permissions. So you see, this is the output from the T-SQL that we're running, because it says the user exists. It was already part of our T-SQL. And now that we have run this once already, you can see that for Jan, for Andre, it knows the user exists. 
is busy doing its work. If we keep coming down, we'll see what happens next. Just checking all of these users. It's going to take a couple of minutes to run every time. But we implemented this for this user, for this client, and they were able to literally remove all of the work for permissions for these Azure SQL instances from the DBA team completely. The, the DBA team had nothing to do. So let's go and find uh, where is our Ben? So I didn't change enough code and it looks like we're not actually doing that. So any Hop. questions, throw me questions. And uh, I'll like you there. asked me, uh, you still have 10 minutes before the end of uh, the, the session. Excellent. So fire, fire any questions away that you like and we will do some live debuggery. Possibly. Checking users. See what we've got in there. Oh, that's interesting. For some reason, it decides to not be able to do this here. Okay, I need to go and fix fix that and have a look. Like I said, this all changed this morning um, when I realised that if we were connecting with an access token. Um, we didn't need to have a database user there. I will go back and have a look. That's a little bit annoying. So that literally is my session. We have taken a Excel sheet and given it to a department and they make a change. They push it up into, um, into Azure DevOps and a pipeline runs. And you can see this pipeline is run every time I've done a demo at this particular client. This pipeline has probably run two or 300 times with the number of changes that they've made. So um, obviously when I go back on Monday, they're going to be saying, hang on a minute, something's not working, which is okay, we can fix that. But you can see how when it starts being 200, 300 times, it, it was in the past 200 or 300 times of the admin team having to go and find the right file with that. And then we had to put the right user in. So the rollback. Uh, from external provider. Oops. Oops. Um, let's have a UK in there. Really won't work. And add them to DB. Oh, let's add them to DB data reader. Maybe we'll try BA reporting. And now I'll have to run. Oh no, not connected with the right thing. Let's connect. That's me. And I have to go through and do that. Oh no, I don't have to. Uh, I can't do that. And you can see how much time this would take. But how much that of those 300 times we have just removed because as soon as we added the permission, they would then have to go and fill in all the paperwork and close the call and pass it through, or maybe go back and check and say, hey, that's the wrong username or the wrong group name or the wrong permission, or did you mean this? Whereas by giving them a lot of drop downs, validating what it was that they were, uh, the data that they were entering, we had a lot more control. So that is my demonstration. Thank you very much for having me. If you have any questions in the future, then the best place to get in touch with me 
is Twitter, SQL DBA with Beard. Um, please take a look at beard.media slash book. That is the month of lunches. Um, that's me completed. Do, do we have question in the in the room? <laughs>